So um, I'll be talking about uh, microorganisms in soils that have had uh, applied animal manures. And I think um, everyone's aware of the importance of microorganisms in soils, um, especially as drivers of biogeochemical cycles. And yet, when you see soil studies, usually there are physical and chemical measurements taken, and rarely do you see microbiological analysis. And I think a lot of the reason for that is that micro, microbiologists have not been able to keep up with soil scientists and chemists historically, because it's very difficult to culture especially important functional groups of microorganisms. And we usually can't keep up with the scale and the throughput that um, soil scientists and chemists can. But now with the really maturity of the molecular biological methods, not only can we sensitively and specifically target important groups of organisms, but we can do it on the kind of scale that soil scientists and, and chemists can do now. So we can be incorporated into the thinking in terms of what's going on in soil systems. Um, I'll specifically talk about uh, microorganisms and greenhouse gas production. And I know we've all um, heard uh, plenty about the different greenhouse gases that are important, especially in relationship to agriculture, CO2, methane, and nitrous oxide. Uh, I think it's important to note that microorganisms are the key, most largest producers of these compounds in agricultural systems. Methane is produced in anaerobic systems in complex microbial consortia, they're produced in livestock intestines, uh, waste treatment systems, and they're, they're produced in anaerobic soils, but I think um, it's also important to note that they're, they're produced in uh, what we would consider to be anaerobic soils may be quite different than the microsites that a, ba a bacterium sees. So you can have production in a system that doesn't especially look anaerobic in, in terms of macro scale. Um, N2O is produced from both um, anaerobic denitrification, and that's incorrect up there, um, um, from aerobic uh, nitrification. Is there, there a pointer on here? Oh, that's okay. Um, so uh, this is my uh, nitrogen cycle, which I'm sure many of you have seen many times before, except for this one has the enzymes in the bacteria responsible con for converting those compounds. Um, and so you don't have to memorize it because I'll show it several times. <laughs> but the, the green is uh, the nitrification. And I just wanted to point out that um, N2O is produced from aerobically as like a, a leak or a kind of byproduct, a conversion of hydroxylamine um, to nitrite. While uh, denitrification, anaerobic production, there's a direct product that is nitrous oxide, and that's from incomplete um, denitrification. And I'll talk about both of, both of those methods. So there's, there's a lot of valid ways, obviously, to look at uh, greenhouse uh, gas production in, in um, systems. And mainly, you look at um, how does management and environment affect the gases that are produced, but what I'm interested in looking at is how does management environment affect the bacteria that produce those gases? And so I, um, to, to kind of get a, a handle on this, I used some soil samples from a study conducted by uh, Karamat Sustani, who is a soil scientist in our lab in Bowling Green, and his postdoc, uh, Jason Warren, who was, uh, his, his, um, was at Bowling Green at the time. He's now at Extension in, in Oklahoma State and then others at, at Bowling Green and, and University of Kentucky. And it was published in 2010 in the Soil Science Society America Journal. And, and I would suggest if you want to know details about the study to download the article or get in touch with me and I can get it sent to you. Um, I just had a very small uh, part to play in that. Um, so they were looking at evaluating the effect of, of pre-plant swine effluent application on greenhouse uh, gas production in no-till corn. They, they had two, two growing seasons. They measured gases with vented chambers. They had control and, and um, chemical fertilizer, urea, ammonium nitrate, and um, th uh, three swine effluent methods. And uh, I just wanted to point out that I actually just went out 14 days after the manure application um, in the second year of the season and took the soil samples. And the idea there was I was 
actually developing my nitrification and denitrification assays, and I just wanted to see if I could find any kind of a correlation what they were seeing with the gas production. Um, so I, I will only talk about that 2008 season and that period of time when I took my samples as far as their, their stuff is concerned. So the, like I said, the, um, there were three different methods of application, aeration in which um, holes were punched in the soil and then the, the uh, slurry was ap applied into those, those uh, holes. Uh, surface application was carried out by um, uh, using the same implement, uh, same apparatus as for the aeration, but without the the whole the implement, and then injection was carried out using a um, shank that made a 20 centimeter deep trench that was um, the slurry was applied into, and um, they uh, used the vented gas chambers. Um, uh, you can see uh, it's hard, but. The, in the back, you can see how there's an anchor that's, that's placed into the soil, and then when they do the gas measures, measurements, they put the chamber over the top, create an a airtight seal, and then they take measurements at 0, um, 15, and 30 minutes, and they measure CO2, methane, and nitrous oxide. I did the little clouds because at every time I looked online, every, uh, everything had a, cloud, a greenhouse gas cloud, so <laughs> I thought it was appropriate. Um, so this is this is the CO2 data, and this is from from their analysis of CO2 grams per meter squared, and we have the control and the chemical fertilizer. I show surface at two different depths because we took samples from two different depths, um, but this is the same measurement, and then aeration and injection, and they found that there was no difference in CO2 production, and there was no effect of swine manure application for. CO2. Uh, the equivalent in mic microbial analysis was kind of total bacterial and total fungal cells. It's a little, this is a, a little um, um, incomplete story, but, but I'll, I'll just express it that way. Uh, so the green is total cells, and the red are fungal cells, and we have log cells per gram of soil, uh, control and uh, chemical, and then the two different depths, aeration, injection, and then we also have the slurry um, uh, samples. And um, as you can see, there were there were high concentrations of bacteria, but no real effect of swine manure application. And there were also high numbers of bacteria in the swine slurry. And that, every time I've ever tested um, uh, soils after manure application, I'm kind of stunned. I really don't see an effect in total cells except for occasionally with poultry litter, and it's just because it's just jam-packed with, with bacteria. Fungal cells are obviously, they're a lot lower, they're really not in swine slurry, I never picked up any fungi in the swine slurry, and, um, but I, I do want to add that um, this doesn't really correspond to respiration because uh, fungal cells are much larger than bacterial cell, so per cell the, the amount of CO2 that is given off is, is a lot higher. But the main point here being that there really wasn't a difference based on application um, or, yeah, manure application method either. So then we looked at, um, they, they looked at methane production, and uh, so they had some interesting results, differences in 2007 and 2008, and again, I'm only focusing on the 2008 sampling, and they found that there were some increases um, with, with swine slurry application, but injection resulted in a, a significant increase in methane production. And that increase um, happened over 11, um, up to 11 days. So the equivalent microbiologically is looking at the bacteria that produce methane, the methanogens, and the bacteria that utilize the methane, methane oxidizers. And so the green is the, are the methanogens, and the red are the methane oxidizers. And you can see that um, there was a huge increase in those populations uh, over background when you applied the manure. And there was an equal increase in methanogens and methane oxidizers, um, and it, there was no effective treatment. However, you can see that those populations probably came in with the slurry. So the concentration of those organisms are the same as, as you find in the slurry, and then how that relates to the gas production, seeing higher um, gas production in the injected treatment, our results would suggest that it's not an increase in those populations, it's a change in the activity of those organisms. And since I was doing DNA, I couldn't measure activity, but there's obviously, even though there's high populations, there's differences in the activity of the organisms. 
Okay, so nitrous oxide, um, very important greenhouse gas. They found that there were, um, there's increases in, in nitrous oxide in all treatments that received any kind of nitrogen, including a chemical fertilizer. And the greatest increase was in the injected um, slurry treatment, but also an, an increase in aeration, in the aerated treatment. And the, they had a kind of peak at six days, but the, there was a, a kind of delayed, continuous response up to 18 days. Uh, if y'all were in, in the earlier talks, you saw Bill Jokola was looked at injection of dairy slurry, and he had a similar kind of a delayed response of NTO production. Theirs was like six to 12 days. So we're, they're seeing similar kinds of results. So we wanted to um, kind of try to describe that microbiologically by looking at, again, N2O being produced by nitrification and by denitrification. So we first look at the um, AMOA gene. So we're basically, we're looking at, at nitrifiers. And there's a big debate in the micro world about the importance of archaea versus bacteria. Um, so what has happened is we historically just thought that we're only archaea. So this is something molecular analysis has started showing there's huge numbers of ammonia oxidizing archaea. Um, and what we found was that there are huge numbers of archaea but those, and those are present in the control and, and all of the treatments. But there was no response to the swine effluent addition. The, the actual effect or uh, um, community responding to um, effluent is the ammonia oxidizing bacteria. And that increase was in all, all of the um, swine effluent treatments and, and in the nitrogen fertilizer as well. So those are ammonia oxidizers. Uh, then we looked at um, denitrification, so we looked at those in the, the anaerobic um, system. And this is a little more complicated. We looked at three different genes in the system. The NARG is the nitrate reductase, NIR-K, the nitric, um, nitrite uh, reductase, and then nitrous oxide reductase, NAZ. So three, three different um, groups of organisms. Or, you know, could be the same organisms and they have all of the genes. Uh, I know this is terrible to look at, but it, it's really not, not that complicated. You have um, in yellow your nitrous oxide reducers. And let me go back one second just to say nitrous oxide, is, uh, that, that group of organisms with that NAS-G are the, NAS are the only group of organisms that take N2O to, to uh, nitrogen gas. So it's an immensely important group of organisms. So microbiologists focus a lot on nitrous oxide um, reductases in those, those populations. And so that's the yellow. You can see the nitrous oxide reducers. And you can see that they were high in the control in the background. They were high in the slurry. And they were ubiquitously present in all of the treatments. Similarly, for the nitrite reducers, they were present, that's the green, they were present, also present in all the treatments. So you probably are used to hearing, oh, denitrification just happens, and it happens a lot because these bacteria are, are everywhere. And, you know, that, that would suggest, yeah, they are. We, we actually see that too. But then we looked at nitrate reducers by the NARG, and so they, they take nitrate to nitrite, and we found that there was a, there were none in the background, so the none in the soil, that's, that's below our detection limit, there were none in the slurry. So within 14 days of application, we had six, seven, eight orders of magnitude increase in that, that population. So that population is obviously very important to the driving of N2O production. And so more so than these organisms that are just present and they're going to do what they're going to do, these are, these are the groups that may be causing that delayed response that you're seeing. Yours has to have uh, mineralization, they have to have nitrate buildup, and, and the population has to increase. And this is just the, the detail on, on those differences in those populations. And here I'll note that we saw a lot of difference in whether we sampled you know, at 1.3 centimeters or 5 centimeters in all of these treatments, just showing that you can't take a blank a, you know, a stick and say, oh, I'm always going to measure 5 centimeters. It really depended on treatment quite a lot. So the basic conclusions on, on the, the microbial analysis of these samples is that there were really two groups that responded a lot to the slurry application, nitrifying bacteria and nitrate reducers. 
So these are the organisms that, that are the key to the changes that you see happening because of manure application. Now, in terms of the methane, um, that, those are probably just changes in activities of those populations. And, or it could just be that's methane blowing up off from application. I, I don't really know that, but I just saw that there was really no change associated with the, the application. There were just a lot present in the manure. Um, and I, I won't go on about the um, details of other findings, um, because I know you're probably more interested in how do you integrate this into uh, manure management? How is this something that you apply to, to our systems? And I would say that microbiology is a real value add to these, these um, field studies. And that if, if the microbiology can be incorporated into management practices, we may be able to have, find out some new things and have some better finer scale um, uh, tuning of, of management practices. And I'll just give one example of that. I mean, I'm obviously very interested in the NARG, the nitrate reductase, because really there hasn't been a lot done in that, that field. But as I said, microbiologists are massively interested in nitrous oxide reductase. And that gene requires 12 copper um, cofactors and has a pH optimum over 7. So if you have a low copper soil and you have a low, low pH soil, you're going to have more nitrous oxide um, produced because you're not making that gene that is essential for that last step in the process. And so similarly, the, the, nitrous ox, the nitrate reductase requires iron sulfur um, cofactors and molybdenum cofactors. And so maybe there's possibility to find some compounds that can, can modify that population. Um, and so I just wanted to, to thank um, people that, that helped me on the study and um, acknowledge the national program in the, with the USDA ARS and well I mean I was even surprised that it isn't in the slurry I mean it, the, and, and that that assay is you know some of these I would probably like NAS I think we've talked about the amount of diversity we're limited by the amount of diversity in these populations that assay is a very very good assay and so when there's nothing there there's just nothing there. And, and when there is, you know, it, it really increases. So, so, so it's maybe the question, maybe there's an alternate, more, an alternate. Absolutely, yeah. That's another good point is that the, the more that we focus in on the microbiology, all the norms like ammonia oxidation by bacteria start to change. And um, Sanford and Sanford Chi from Illinois just came out and found a whole different population of nitrous oxide reducers, and so they maybe were not even measuring the most important ones. So there is some, uh, but it is interesting that there was that massive increase in response to the slurry. So it is responding, those groups. <laughs>